Uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, letting me come up here. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to follow <laughs> Brother Danny. <laughs> it was, I'm dying. I mean, I'm just, he wrecked me with his comedy this morning. I mean, how far is the river, amen? And then Tom the Frog, he never did find the river. So I was just over there laughing and cracking up. I've never heard that before, Danny. <laughs> And I'm sitting there going, I'm supposed to get up and preach after that. <laughs> I'm dying in the corner back over there. So uh, poor Tom, amen. But listen, this morning I, I got to give some thanks out. Uh, we, we've had a great camp. I can't believe it already went this fast. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Rob Davis from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Got the Victor Youth Choir with us. And um, we've, uh, we've been doing this uh, for a while. And I just think this has been an awesome camp. And I want to thank you, Brother Danny, for putting it on. And I want to first off thank Brother Danny for all he does and the things behind the scenes. And he's always had a burden for youth. We crossed roads a long time ago, and he didn't even know my name. I came to one of his youth rallies back in, I think, 97, 1997. And it changed my life. And um, I, I, was, uh, I was just looking for something more than the Christianity I had found. And uh, like he said, the number one deadly sin of, of uh, the number one sin that, or the number one problem that kills young people at our dead churches. And uh, I kind of came from that background, way up uh, where I was at, trying to look for something real. And I'll never forget walking into his youth rally. And a good friend of mine, Smokey Grissom, some of you know him from youth rally, he kept bugging me to come down to it. He said, Brother Rob, come on, man, come on. Get in there with me. So I, it took him about two or three years to talk me into it. And so I said, all right. So, of course, if you, if you, Smokey leaves at midnight, you know, and then comes down. And so we drive all night. We get there. And that Friday morning, I was kind of burned out. I was sitting there, you know, we were going through. It was under the tent. Brother, he had like a huge tent. And I'll never forget, we got in there. And as the service started to get big, you know, started to fill up and you're watching everything. Um, it finally comes time to get the youth choir to come in. And about, I don't know, dozens of kids start just marching in. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And I'm watching this thing. And then they sing their first song. I'll never forget it. It was Precious Jesus. And uh, it was just like the movie Back to the Future where Michael, I know it's a but I'm from the 80s. So when Michael J. Fox, he gets that guitar and he gets that amp and he cranks every volume up in that house. And then he puts his shades on and he picks that first string and it all blows up and blows them across the room. Well, the Holy Spirit did that to me spiritually underneath that tent, Brother Danny. You don't know that. But that's what happened. I was like, what is that? And I'm crying and bawling and, you know, crying out to God. And I, I brought some other people with me. And uh, I'll never forget Buck Beavers was with us. I don't know if you know Buck Beavers. He, 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 he was a World War II veteran, and he had a pacemaker. He's standing right next to me, Jason. And he's crying. We're both just bawling. And I'm looking down at him. I'm like, is he going to be okay? He's like 86. And I said, you know, and he's like, Brother Ralph, if I die, don't, if I go down, don't call the ambulance. Don't, I'm going home from here, amen. And I was like, amen, me too, brother. If I go down, don't, don't you call the hospital either. I want to go. This is good. So, and I've never forgot it. And uh, I, I, saw, I was like, what is this? And right then and there, I said, man, if I ever get a chance, Lord, to have a youth choir, you know, I, I'll do it, Lord. I just want to just, just, you give me something like this. And I just been pursuing it. I got hungry for it. And I thank God for Danny. He's big, big influence. He's one of the ones that shaped my life. So, and uh, we, when we moved down to Knoxville from where we were up around D.C., um, you know, we just started coming over. Just my kids. We'd be just the faces in the crowd. And I would just, he would inspire me to get all these ideas. And so I'll go back to Knoxville and try so many things. So we got a youth choir together. And, you know, here we are now. And uh, it's just fruit abiding to your account. And I want to thank his daughters for sticking with him. You know, he's been a great dad, I'm sure. I mean, I can't imagine growing up with him as a dad. <laughs> but Ethan and Molly, you're blessed, you know. He's got a great wife, Kelly, and they've been good to us. I want to thank for taking in Anthony. Or is Anthony, amen. <laughs> he won, he's now a North Carolina thug, all right? He called them thugs over there. Now he's a North Carolina thug. And you've been good to him. So thank you, Brother Danny. I want to thank the Castle family, Castle girls, for all you've done. You've inspired us. You're a big input. If you take him out of the, my equation of my life, you take me out. And then you take all them out. It's weird how we're connected. It's all a link, amen? It's how God works. So thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who prayed yesterday. He sent uh, you saints that got a hold, and you young saints. I mean, there are some teenagers that got, got on them. You little ones got, got on them. 
and he went and prayed, and he saw your results. We just acted. That was not us that did, did any of that. It was the Holy Spirit that we prayed in, and, and he showed up last night. Amen? And I thank God for that. So I thank God for this camp, for the staff, for all the things. The ones that are running the cantinas and stuff, I just want to thank you. You've been, you know, you've just been tremendous to work with. And everything. Brother Cody over there, hiding behind that sound system. Let's give it up for him. <laughs> He's got, <laughs> he, he tests and double tests. And Brother Kelly, they're testing, testing. And then things don't go right when it starts, you know. So it's just, and brother, I remember Brother Danny saying that many times at his uh, camps and his youth rallies and stuff. He'll say, we've checked it a dozen times. Before we start, and then when it starts, you know how it goes, Jason. Something gets in that thing, Satan or something. So this morning, I did have a message, and I'm kind of struggling with it because <laughs> it not I mean, it's just wrecked me. I got two now. You know, because there's one I was kind of stewing on, one I really thought God wanted me to have, and I just don't know. Matthew chapter 10. I was looking for which direction to go, and Jason, you don't know this, but key word that you sang in your second song there to me was confirmation from God which way to go because it's two different messages two different ways and this morning I just want to share with you some things about the Lord young people that uh, maybe you don't you don't you just you haven't pondered or you haven't thought about or you just haven't you know you just haven't like um like just said wow Lord you know, who are you? What is this thing? What is Christianity? Who's your son? What's he, what is this all about? And some of you just got saved. Some of you are still on the fringe. You're, you're not saved in here. You know this Lord spoke to you this whole week. We've had great preaching, great, you know, singing. And you're just on that cusp. You're just kind of like staring over going, I don't know. And so you're in different situations in here this morning. But the one thing that I want you to know is that God loves you. We've had strong preaching. We've had tremendous preaching. And this morning, I just want to remind you of the love of God. It's the love of God. And we're going to take our text here, John chapter 10, and verse number 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this camp. It's been a tremendous blessing just to me individually, God. I've just been soaking it up. And Lord, I've needed it. It's been a long year. And I love camp, and I love the, the things that, that camp does for me. I'm still... Like the brother over here is 82 years old, I still come here to, to get fed and to get, you know, pumped up and fired up and face another year. And Lord, I hope every young person has gotten something out of this camp. If not, God, may tonight or today be, be their day that they, you speak to them. Now, God, use me as your messenger. Get me out of the way. Holy Spirit, please take over. Uh, just make me your, your, your animated mud clawed, God. Just speak through me and use me now this morning. Reach young hearts. Speak to hurting hearts this morning, God. And Holy Spirit, just move amongst them. Hug on them, God. I don't know what they're going through. There's so many different. You know each heart in here. You know the pain they're carrying. You know the fear they're carrying. You know the failure they're carrying. You know them intimately. And God, just remind us of that this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. A couple weeks ago, I said a couple months ago, actually, I heard this story. And it reminded me of, uh, I don't know, it just got to my heart. This man was getting ready to uh, start his day out, and his kids, it was a Saturday or something, and he got up early to go to do his thing. And he actually, uh, he, so he woke up. He was laying in bed. He gets up around, I don't know, 6.30-ish. He said somewhere around 5-ish, 5.30, he heard a, a thump, and he said, huh. So he got up to go figure out what it was because he had little ones in the house. They don't, they don't have teenagers yet, but maybe one teenager. But he said, I got up, and I wanted to know what that, what that was. And he said, it was weird. It sounded like it was over in my son's room. It was a bedroom over. He says, I got in my hallway and went down there, and I looked in his room, and he was sleeping. He wasn't up. And he said, I know I heard it. And he said, it was a very distinct womp. He said, it sounded like my son smacked the window. So then he said, well, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe something happened in here. So he went in the room. As he looked down, 
he saw a bird. A bird had hit, and it dawned on him, a bird hit that window. And when it hit the window, it hit it so hard, it made that sound, and it, it, it went down. And he could see it on his truck, on the, the hood of his truck. And he said, oh, no, I don't want my kids waking up to see that. I got to get out there. So he said he went out there, and he walked out there, and he, the little bird was laying right there, and it was, it was, it was fighting to breathe. It, it had crushed its, its very tender ribs. It crushed its, its rib cage. It hit it so hard, it crushed itself. And he said, I, I didn't know what to do. He said, we're getting ready to go somewhere. And, uh, you know, I had to do something with the bird. So I'm looking around. He says, I just picked up that little bird off my hood. And he goes, I just kind of went over some bushes and kind of tossed it in there. And he said, you know, we got ready for our day. And we went on. I can't remember where he went with the rest of the story. But as I got to thinking about that, I was like, you know, what happened to the bird? I mean, it's pitiful, isn't it? Bird's just doing its thing, gets hurt like that, falls, kind of gets tossed off in the bushes. I want you young people to know something. He never went and followed up on the bird. I don't know what happened to that bird as far as like physically. But I know this. The same God that loves you, the same God that loves you intimately, the same God that knows everything about you was standing by that bird. No one else was at that funeral but the Lord God creator who made that little bird. Jesus said, if a sparrow falls out there in these woods, if a sparrow falls or gets hurt or gets harmed, a little sparrow that we wouldn't care about we don't even know where it's at in these woods these beautiful hills if little birds are falling god's at every single funeral right there and he we you know it hurts that that life he made is perishing it's a funeral for the lord and he said he's at every single death of every one of his creations you think about that he cares about a bird that we ain't gonna make much time for and he makes time for each one of them and jesus said this if your father cares about that you think about this young person. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your family life's like. I don't know what, what kind of problems you've had. I don't know if you come from a broken home. I don't know if you, you, you got an abuse of dad or abuse of mom. Or you, you don't even have a mom and dad. And you're sitting there going, what about me, Brother Rob? Does anybody love me? Hey, I'm telling you, the same one that stands at the funeral of that little bird is standing with you right now. He did not leave you. He does not know your name. He knows who you are. He didn't forget your name. He didn't forget where you come from. And he understands that situation that you're going through. He's right there, young people. I promise you, he's right there. As, I, as I've gotten on, Brother Danny, and I, got, I, I grew up, um, my dad's a Crow Indian. And um, I grew up on a reservation in Montana. And uh, as I look back and I see how I grew up, you know, just on the backside of an Indian reservation and, you know, wild and free and just running around. A lot of times my mom would say, Robbie, just come home when the sun goes down. To take my 22 and my German Shepherd and just go roam the hills with my buddies. And back then, you know, kids, <laughs> we were young, but we had guns, man. I mean, walking through with 22s, now it'd be a panic mode. But back then, nine, you know, seven, eight-year-old kids, 22s, they were like, hey, where you got boys going? Make sure you shoot straight, you know. By now, it's panic time. But back then, we just run around and stuff and go through things. And, you know, as I looked up and he, God was pursuing me on that, as I look back, I see even though I was on the backside of nowhere, I came from, my, my, when I was 10 years old, my mom and dad divorced. I never saw my dad ever again, really, until I was in my 30s. And I'd look back, and I'd, I would be discouraged about that. I'd be upset about that. And I'd say, you know, I needed a dad. Where was my dad at that time? 
And as I've gone on with the Lord, Jason, I've seen this. Yeah, my real dad wasn't with me, my father, like my physical father. But my heavenly father was with me the entire time. He, he roamed those hills with me. He was on those hills in the Crow Indian Reservation. He was with us when we went hunting. He was with us when we went fishing. He was with me when I went swimming with my dog. You know, we just went out there and had a good time. God was with he, he was right all around me. I just couldn't see it then, you know. But he was there. You girls, listen to me. I think you're the ones that need to hear this the most this morning. Guys, you do too. You get that tough macho image. I get it. I was in the military. I had a special kind of special ops job. I understand you know, that macho stuff. I get it. Uh, I worked with the Secret Service. I walked with them. I walked with presidents. So I don't know how much more you want it. You know, declare what, you know, hey, you know, we've done some special things. I have some friends that are special ops. And a uh, long time ago, hey, man. But uh, listen, what I'm saying is you still need to understand something. You're loved. A lot of times that macho tough front is you're trying to hide a hurt. Maybe you didn't have a dad. Maybe you don't have a dad in your life right now. Maybe you're disappointed and, and you're upset about things. You say, Brother Rob, does anybody love me? This God who stands by a sparrow when it falls stands by you. He's right there, I promise. He's right there. Now, girls, listen. You say, Brother Rob, what about me? I don't feel like I'm loved. I don't feel like anybody cares about me. The Bible says this. Jesus says it. If your heavenly father cares that much about a sparrow, how much more does he care about you? My girls who, who listen, you got your brush, who's got a brush? Give me a brush. You say, how, how close, how, how intimate does God know me? How, I mean, that's a good question, isn't it? How intimately does he know us? How intimately, how much into your mind, into your heart, how much does he know you? It's a great question. And Jesus answers it. He said, the father knows the number of hairs on your head. Girls, listen to me. If you could have Jesus here right now and say, Jesus, how much do you love me? He said, I love you. I, died. I love you. He said, well, how, much, how well do you know me, Jesus? And he said, and he, and he read that, and he said, I, I read in the Bible where it says that you know the number of hairs on my head. And you asked them. You see, the problem is not that Jesus loves you. The problem is that do we love Jesus? Do we love him? Now, think about that. If Jesus Christ was standing right here, right now, and this young lady said, Jesus how many hairs I got on my head? And we all go through this, but Jesus, how many hairs are on my head? I wonder if you could look in his eyes, in the Lord's eyes. If you could look in his eyes, before you ask that question, and then during the transaction of the question going to him, I wonder... If you would just see some sorrow, just for just a fleck of sorrow. Because he said he knows, but you're asking because you're, are you, you're, you're like, are, do you really know? Do you really know? He's, he's going to know. He knows why you're asking. Do you, you're doubting him. Just for, and he's just going to be a quick, just maybe just a, a softness of his eyes. And he'll just, and he, he's always a gentleman. Every time you see Jesus Christ, he's always a gentleman. The only people he got mad about were religious people, amen? You can read the whole New Testament, and every time Jesus got upset, it was the religious crowd, the professionals, you know, especially the drive by Christians. So that's who he got. But when it came to some tenderness, like that woman who wanted him to heal her daughter, and she wasn't, you know, she wasn't supposed to get the blessing. You know, Lord, heal my daughter. And he said, hey, it's not meat to give uh, meat to the dogs. And she understood that. And what's fascinating about that is she's the only one that ever pinned Jesus Christ with the word of God. In when she used his word against them, because it says, if you love your animals, you're good to them in Proverbs. 
And he, she, 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 and she got that blessing. That's why the Bible says he marveled at her. You read that. It said he marveled at, man, that's good. I mean, all the professionals couldn't do it. This is a woman, she comes and does it. And he goes, so be according to your faith. Your daughter's healed. I said tenderness. He could have said, get out of here. Go away. He said, hey, your daughter's, your daughter's going to be fine. But if you ask that number, ladies, listen to me. How many are on my, how many are on my head right now? He would tell you. Say 35,326. Yeah, do you understand something? Listen to me. There is no computer that can tell you that. Bill Gates can't invent something that can tell you how many hairs are on your head. They just can't. Hey, Steve Jobs with Apple can't be done. The Pentagon, any kind of deep state stuff you got out there, they can't tell you how many hairs are on your head, but the Lord Jesus Christ can. You say, why, Brother Rob? Because he intimately knows you and he intimately loves you. Hey, not only that, listen to this. This is the great, so big of a loving God you got, girls. Listen, fellas, listen. He knows how many fell out this morning. That is how much he knows you. That is how much he loves you. I mean, he just knows you. He said, Brother Robinson, it doesn't feel like it. I understand that. I get that. But I'm telling you, it makes no, what, what we feel one moment, it, it changes like the wind. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He loves you as much now as he did on that cross when he was sitting, when he went to it and hung there for you. When he was standing on that hill and he looked out across it as he was hanging before they put him up. And as he's hanging up there looking out, he's looking out at, the, at you. He loves you that much, girls. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. This morning, I just want to tell you something. It's not going to be very long. I'm about to end this up. And uh, Hannah, I, brother, you want to get an invitation song? I'm done. I'm going to say something real quick. Who wants to sing it? Hannah or Jason? Whoever wants to come on up here. And um, listen. Say, Brother Rob, how much am I loved right here? Wherever, you know, we're in the backside of Greenville, Tennessee. You know, we're just here and here we are. And it's like, does God know I'm here? Yes, he does. God brought you here so you could hear Brother Danny and these great preachers that have been before me. Brother Kelly, Brother Ricky, Brother, um, Bruce, uh, Brother uh, Butler from down, uh, 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 down there from Georgia. Listen, why? Because God loves you. You're so loved this morning. For God so loved the world, put your name right there. For God so loved you and you and you and you and you and you. And he doesn't stop. That love is a love with, that will not end. He's there from he, when he made that little bird and he watched that bird first take flight and he watched that bird fly around and that bird's going and living its life. That God's right with him. He's going through him. He's loving on that little bird. And when that bird comes to the end, to the very tragic end, like that bird hitting that window and it crushes its ribs and it's sitting there gasping for its last breath. God is sitting there and he's on his knees with that little bird and he's waiting for it to come home. But he's sad because that little bird is done. And he say, Brother Rob, what about me? He loves you more than that. You can say whatever you want to say, young people, but don't you dare say you're not loved. You are very loved by the God who formed you, by the God who fashioned you, by the God who created you, by the God who gave you your talents, by the God who gave you your hair, who gave you your face, who gave you your body. You are so loved by this God. Don't you dare say, nobody loves me. Hey, that'll fix 13 reasons, amen. That was the original message I was going to preach is the 13 reasons. Let me tell you something. Here's only one reason you need to stay alive because your creator loves you. Your creator loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. That's enough. If nothing else, that's enough this morning to understand you are so loved. You're so loved this morning. Every young man, every young woman in here, you're so loved. 
and he proved it. God gave his only begotten son, his only begotten son, for God so loved, he gave his only begotten son. How are you doing with the son this morning? How are you doing with, the God, with God this morning? Where are you at with him this morning? Aren't you thankful for the week we've had? Has it been a blessing? Hey, this morning, instead of asking for God, you know, coming up here and asking, why don't you come up and thank him? Come up and give thanks for what he's done. Thank him for this wonderful, thank him for your, your pastor. Thank him for your bus workers that brought you here. Thank him for the leaders. Thank him for the, just come up and thank him. And say, and it's mostly thank him for making you, you. He didn't make a mistake. He didn't make a mistake on you. He did not do something wrong. He wanted you to be you the way he wants you to be you. He's not trying to, he don't want you to be him or her. He wants you to be you because he cares about you. And he's going to come back for you. He'll be there when you, your last breath, God will be right there. You're so loved this morning. Let's stand.